Intelligence reports recently publicized finally confirm what every Canadian must have known deep down. The Trudeau Liberals have now been exposed for enabling China to rig Canadian elections through a massive voter fraud operation involving Chinese international students of all things. Canadians won't believe the explosive revelations that have just emerged surrounding a certain Liberal MP's actions in 2019. Secret documents suggest the Chinese government may have systematically interfered in our democracy by busing a ton of non-Canadians to vote illegally. This is the most chilling example yet of foreign powers infiltrating Canada's sacred democratic process right under Justin Trudeau's nose. Either the Liberals were complicit in allowing an attack on the integrity of our elections, or they're somehow completely oblivious when it comes to China playing dirty. I don't know which possibility is worse. This new information proves just how far China's puppets have infiltrated the Liberal Party. The CSI's documents reveal that the Chinese consulate may have threatened students if they didn't vote for a certain candidate. Canadians won't believe the coercive lengths China went to in rigging our democratic process as Trudeau stood idly by. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. The latest scandal rocking the liberal government involves accusations that MP Han Dong relied on votes from Chinese international students to win his nomination back in 2019. This shady abuse of Canada's election process raises some serious concerns about foreign interference in our democracy. According to Dong himself, a busload of Mandarin-speaking students living in a Seneca College residence got bussed in to vote for his nomination in Don Valley North. He claims he doesn't know if all the students voted for him, but thinks most did because he had hit up their school and encouraged their support. Let's come on to the buses, please. When you met with the commissioner, you recalled one bus. Uh, as of today, we're up to three, right? Uh, when I had the interview, uh, my memory had one bus, and then quickly, you know, I, I correct my records, and, and it was two buses that my campaign rented. You say and you did so quickly? Sorry? You say you corrected this quickly? I think it was within days after the interview, my, uh, you know, I, I, I correct that it was two buses that my campaign rented. All right, well, we only found out about it yesterday for it being a second bus, and then it turns out that a third bus came up over lunch. Doesn't seem very quick to me, sir. Are you saying that the commission hasn't informed us in time, or is it instead that maybe you didn't inform the commission as quickly as you recall? I, I forgot exactly when we uh, correct the records uh, as to how many buses my campaign rented, whether one or two. I forgot exactly when, but uh, it, you know, we voluntarily correct that record. All right. That's not all some Intel reports suggest an even shadier effort to rig the nomination. The students were allegedly given fake documents by people linked to a known proxy agent so they could vote illegally even though they didn't live in the riding. The third bus is apparently associated with a school, a high school, called NOIC Academy, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, and that school is located at 50 Featherston Avenue, Markham. Right? Um, right, that's the current address, but previously it was in North Shore. Previously being in 2019? Uh, in 2019. Where was it located in 2019? I don't recall. But was it I, in your I, riding? Uh, the residence is, is in my right, riding. Yes, but was the school in your riding? Um, I, I don't recall, but the residence was in my riding. Yes, but I want to know where the school was. Because the school, when it was located at 50 Featherston, which is apparently where its current location, is not in your riding. It's in the riding of Mary Ng. At the time, in 2019, when you went to campaign at this school, was it in your riding or in someone else's riding? I, I don't recall its, its previous address, but I think they moved to Markham um, in the last, like it was after 2019. So I'm not concerned with its exact address. But I want your evidence, I want you to tell the commissioner under oath whether that school in 2019 was located in your riding or not. I, I can I can give you that information because I don't recall, but I can tell you for sure that the residence is in, uh, in the riding and that is 
that is the address that would, uh, as, as part of eligibility. This suggests a systematic attempt to interfere in Dong's nomination using Chinese students as pawns by forging documents. Along with busing in students to vote for him, it shows a deliberate scheme to pack the nomination meeting with ineligible foreign voters and steal a Canadian democratic process. The fact that Dong encouraged these students to support him and then pleads ignorance about the alleged doc fraud raises deep suspicions. This reeks of a Chinese state sponsor opt to meddle in a Canadian nomination contest by exploiting international students. Who knows if this is just a single case of election rigging? It may just be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to China's interference efforts as a declassified CSI's report tabled as evidence at the inquiry reveals an even more alarming scheme. It allegedly states the Chinese government itself orchestrated the plan to bus in students because Dong was China's preferred candidate. The report accuses China of systematically interfering in Canada's democracy by supporting candidates sympathetic to Beijing like Dong. This shocking allegation of direct Chinese electoral interference sets the stage for even broader concerns about the corruption of Canada's democratic processes, because this is a blatant exploitation of loopholes in Liberal Party nomination rules, which only require voters be 14 years old and ordinarily reside in Canada. The fact that Liberal officials defend this as compliant shows just how corrupt their moral compass has become. Canadian nominations should be for Canadians alone to decide, not foreign citizens. Dong's inconsistent and fuzzy memories about the specifics don't install much confidence in his innocence. At first, he claimed his campaign only rented one bus, but now admits there were two or even three buses. He says he doesn't know who arranged and paid for a third bus of students from Seneca College, which has now been revealed it was paid for by his wife. This is the same college whose president, David Agnew, went with Dong on a trade mission to China in 2015, a trip Dong now conveniently claims he can't remember. It's hard to believe Dong can't recall spending a week in China with the president of the very college involved in the controversial student voting for his later nomination. Many suspect EU scratch my back I'll scratch yours deal was made on that trade mission, with Seneca agreeing to bus in students from China to support Dong's eventual election bid. Why else would a Canadian college president join a trade trip to China with an unelected wannabe political candidate? Dong's nomination carries all the hallmarks of Chinese government interference, Beijing views Chinese nationals studying abroad as strategic assets to advance the Communist Party's interests. Consulates keep close tabs on students and frequently pressure them to attend events and rallies supporting Beijing's preferred candidates. Per some intel papers, the Chinese consulate threatened blowback for students and their families back in China if they didn't vote for Dong. That's straight-up coercive foreign meddling, not legit democratic participation. Dong even admitted he went to visit the Chinese students at their residence before the nomination. The same students he now claims he wasn't sure would vote for him. Who organized for you to go to the residence of a bunch of students to campaign there? Um, my campaign staff organized um, the, the gathering, uh, or sorry, they organized my meeting with the group of students. Um, they probably contact um, someone that you know, was looking after these students. I, I can't give you more information than that. You met them at their residence. I met them at their residence. You don't just randomly go meet with a bunch of international students in their dorm unless you're courting their support. This completely exposes Dong's hesitation and excuses as complete nonsense. He knew exactly what he was doing. He went to their turf, rallied the troops, and made sure the Chinese students were going to back him at the nomination. Now he's trying to play dumb, but the truth is obvious. Dong's thirsty pursuit of Chinese student votes also matches Beijing's usual playbook. He hit up their campus and hyped them to volunteer for his campaign. None of this bothered the morally bankrupt Liberal Party establishment. National Director Azam Ismail declared renting buses of foreign students to vote in a nomination meeting compliant with party rules. He even told the inquiry that renting buses for Chinese students to vote in a Canadian election process is not concerning and maintained the contest was okay. You are aware that the Commission has received a supplemental statement of anticipated evidence from Mr. Dong? Yes. That statement of anticipated evidence says that Mr. Dong recalls that international students attending a private high school and living in a residence at Seneca College voted in the 2019 Don Valley North nomination. Yes, that's what it says. Yeah. That statement of anticipated evidence also says that Mr. Dong recalls being told that a bus organized by the school had transported some of the students to the nomination meeting. Yes. Assuming, for the sake of this question, that Mr. Dong confirms this information as his evidence, 
Would that change your views about whether there were any issues or irregularities with the 2019 Don Valley North nomination race? No, um, people who are who ordinarily reside within the riding are allowed to vote in our nomination meetings. The only thing that uh, catches me is a bit peculiar that it was organized by the school, given that it was a partisan political event. Ismail's insistence that the controversial nomination contest was acceptable exposes the rot within the Liberal Party. They are willing to explain away serious concerns about election integrity to protect their own. Former Liberal MP Dong also remains welcome in Liberal circles even after leaving caucus amid disturbing allegations of Chinese espionage. Dong keeps close ties with Beijing's representatives in Canada. He wined and dined with Chinese consuls general in Toronto and participated in events at their embassy's request. This soft glove treatment makes Dong an ideal enabler of China's united front efforts to influence Canadian politics. Shady politicians who rely on foreign meddling to get elected will no doubt stay indebted to the regimes pulling their strings once in office. The inquiry has also heard alarming allegations about MP Handong's discussions with Chinese officials regarding Canadians Michael Kovrig and Michael Spaver. The two Michaels were imprisoned in China from 2018 to 2021 in apparent retaliation for Canada's arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou. According to intelligence documents, Dong suggested to a Chinese consul that if China released the two Michaels immediately, it would benefit the conservative opposition party politically. This implies Dong was advising China on how to time the release for maximum political advantage to the governing liberals. If true, this would be an appalling stance by an elected Canadian representative, putting partisan interests ahead of securing freedom for our citizens. It also shows Dong comfortably advising Chinese officials on sensitive matters rather than defending Canadian interests. Dong claims he cannot recall the conversation but says it's possible what was reported was discussed. The intelligence alleges he stressed the need for China to provide some transparency around the cases to placate Canadian public opinion. Again, this seems to position Dong as an advisor to China on managing perceptions around the unlawful detention of the two Michaels, not as a forceful advocate for their release. These allegations cement the perception that Dong was willing to align himself with Chinese interests over Canada's. As an MP, his priority should have been securing the rapid and unconditional release of our citizens. The insinuation that he instead advised China on timing their release for political gain is profoundly disturbing. Canadians should be outraged by the boldness of China's political meddling under the Trudeau government's watch. They have made Beijing braver by showing a lack of integrity and failing to safeguard our democracy. Canadians deserve to know the full truth. Those caught enabling foreign interference need to be exposed and blocked from holding public office again. It's time to put Canada first and take a stand against the Chinese regime's shameless meddling in our cherished democracy. Well, that's all for now. When will Trudeau man up and take responsibility for allowing our democracy to be hijacked by China under his reckless leadership? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.